May I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany. If you look up the word epiphany, you'll find a range of definitions. One, for example, is a moment of sudden and great revelation or realisation. Or how about this? A usually sudden manifestation or perception of the essential nature or meaning of something. The two definitions may not sound so very different, but there is something about the identification in the second that the discovery is of something around essential nature and meaning that feels very important. One of the things that I've often reflected upon in my faith journey, and most especially as I have shared my story with others, and in turn listened to their stories, is the way in which some people are able to describe dazzling moments of enlightenment, while others can't. Each year, when we listen to the story of St Paul's conversion on the road to Damascus, some can identify similarly life-changing moments, and some cannot. What is undoubtedly true of those training for ordination and indeed of many faithful Christians, is that while we cannot always point to a sudden or great revelation, we can probably all recognise ways in which we have come to understand things differently. Ways in which we have grown to observe and notice the ways in which God may be at work in the world. Ways in which our understanding of ultimate meaning has deepened. The Feast of the Epiphany marks the visit of the Magi to the baby Jesus shortly after his birth. Only Matthew's Gospel describes the event, and we hear that, during the time of King Herod, wise men came from the East, seeking to pay homage to the one born King of the Jews. Much of the story tells us more of King Herod's fear and his desire to use the wise men to find the infant and do away with him, seeing him as a threat to his power, than it does about the revelation to the wise men. The wise men themselves seem to be sensitive and observant souls. Somehow they have heard about the birth of Jesus, and with their knowledge of the stars, they feel able to track him down, following the star of Bethlehem. They bring gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh, gifts fit for a king, yet also appearing to recognise something of the life this child will live. And when told in a dream not to return to King Herod, they obey. Some of you may have come across T.S. Eliot's poem, The Journey of the Magi, in which Eliot narrates the story of the wise men's journey. It is, of course, a work of the imagination. He tells the story as though it is being recounted many years later. He identifies the challenges of the journey itself, making it sound anything but glamorous. And then, when the Magi arrive at the stable, Eliot's simple description is, and arriving at evening, not a moment too soon, finding the place, it was you may say, satisfactory. What I love about this is the understatement. No excitement at finding the baby. Nothing about being able to present gifts. No description of the scene or Mary and Joseph. What is also fascinating is that in this very understatement, it is hard to see this as a moment of revelation. And yet, as T.S. Eliot goes on to say, there has been an epiphany, because, speaking so many years later, the Magi recognise that their life was indeed changed in this moment. Having enjoyed the luxury of life in their eastern palaces, their eyes were opened, and they could never experience that privilege in the same way again they came to recognise the fine line between life and death, and that the good news does not insulate us from human suffering, but is rather a promise of God's presence. 
Whatever was the real experience of the Magi, we will never know. Yet in his work of imagination, Eliot gives us an insight into the unexpected ways revelation can happen and its unexpected consequences. In reading the poem, it seems that if the Magi wanted an easy and indeed comfortable life, they would have been better off staying at home. Yet, that would have insulated them from reality and truth. Over the last ten months, there have been those who have sought to make some sense of living through a global pandemic. No doubt this will continue. I wonder how many of us long for a moment of revelation to help us to understand how this time will change us and whether it will change us for the better. I wonder whether the journey of the Magi, and perhaps especially T.S. Eliot's take on it, might help us just a little. Probably none of us would have seen ourselves as enjoying an especially privileged life before the pandemic, the life T.S. Eliot imagines for the Magi of the summer palaces on slopes, the terraces and the silken girls bringing sherbet. Yet, perhaps for some of us, there is something to learn and discover from the change of perspective that the pandemic has brought. To be clear, I am not saying that God sent the pandemic to teach us something. Neither am I saying that any of us would have chosen the year we have just had. And neither am I trying to ignore the pain and loss that has taken place by looking on the bright side. What T.S. Eliot appears to suggest about the Magi is that their lives were changed by visiting Jesus. They didn't become more comfortable, but they saw something deeper and more truthful in the infant in the manger. And perhaps we too can recognise where we have experienced something deeper and more truthful in having our lives disrupted, our plans put on hold or cancelled altogether. Perhaps we see things a little differently than we did before. Perhaps we have even discovered an empathy with others that has surprised us. It is too early to really know the consequences of this pandemic. Yet in each choice we make along the way, we are shaping those consequences, imperceptibly perhaps, but shaping them nevertheless. Perhaps what we might hope for this epiphany is that by gazing intently on the infant Jesus, the ways in which we respond will be part of making a positive difference and that we might grow closer to the truth that is in Christ. Amen.